Amigas eh, queridas, amigas de mi alma, segundo domingo del año, eh, my resolution, mi meta para este año es crear comunidad. Y esto no lo puedo hacer sin ustedes. Quiero cumplir mi meta, tal como nos lo enseñó nuestra psicóloga de cabecera, Diana Laris Goitia. Así que únete a Facebook, a Instagram, hazlo ya. Vea para ti mujer con Emma Restrepo en Facebook y vas a estar viéndonos en vivo. Hoy estaremos entre los 18 y los 22 grados, así que arrimen el cafecito, el chocolatico que hace mucha falta, ábranle las puertas a este, a este cuatro mujeres que tengo aquí en este programa. Nos fuimos. So we'll have about two minutes, and then we'll pick back up. Se le dejé en Jonathan. We'll have two minutes, and then we'll go okay. back in. Okay, so the they, they song, it takes... Like no, 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 I, I usually don't let the whole song play. Okay, it's just, just two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Just so you can this get a feel for it. Who is this guy? Carlos Vives. Carlos Vives. Carlos Vives from my country. Oh, my God, sorry. You don't know his song? Oh, it's one of my favorites, yeah. <laughs> this Dalina, song? I'm too nervous. Uh, this song is yeah. very nice. Shakira is on it. Oh, really? Shakira and Shakira. Carlos Vives, both from Colombia. Wow. You have to see the video. Oh, I'm There alive. Is Shakira dancing barefoot. <laughs> We should put them on the, call them up on the show. Yeah. Hey, girls. It is a shame that people on Facebook, they can't listen to the song. That's a shame. Oh, you're streaming live right now? Yeah. Oh, my God. I would die. Estamos Are we on live. Is it on us? Or you? You. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> that we didn't even know we were Estamos on Estamos on live escuchando a Shakira y a Carlos Vives. Why don't you sing along for them? Da -da 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 la bicicleta. No, 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 no. Du -du 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 <laughs> bueno, ya volvemos, amigos. Ya volvemos. Typically means their lives are going to be in poverty the rest of their lives. Uh, because it's very hard to get a job when you have a baby, especially if you're a single woman, a teen. Uh, it's very hard to go to college. So whatever your plans are after high school, if you have a baby before you graduate, things are not going to be as great as you think. But Hispanic teens are making that choice at a higher rate than black girls or white girls. In fact, in Philadelphia, the white teen rate is one-sixth the, the Hispanic teen rate. That means Hispanic girls are more likely, six times more likely, to wow. have a baby before they're 20. So uh, while one white girl is having a baby when she's a teenager, six girls in the Latino community, or six Latinas teenagers, are having a baby. That's right. Wow. And we, in Philly last year, we had uh, about 1,700 babies born to teens. So most of them were born to Hispanic girls. Um, and the number's rising, and so they're the only group where the teen pregnancy rate is starting to go in the wrong direction. So since, uh, since the early 2000s, we've brought down the teen pregnancy rate across America and in Philly by more than 40%, around 40%, but the only group that's starting to tick back up are Latinas. And um, it's, it's a pretty big concern. Not only that, Emma, Latina girls are the, the group that is choosing at the highest rate to have a second baby no. as a teen. No. Yes. yes. So while one white wow. girl might have one baby, right, Same. when she's a teen, she is far less likely to have a second baby before she's 20. That's, it happens, yeah. but in the Hispanic community it's happening it's more rapidly. Common. And, you know, one of the things that happens around teen pregnancy, and maybe people could call in and tell us, is One of the leading reasons for teen pregnancy is child sex abuse and molestation, right? So if you have a, te a baby when you're 14, the chances that you were abused as a child are pretty much 70 to 80% sexual abuse happening that caused the girl to be making really bad decisions, mostly around self-sabotage, right? Like, I, I am not worthy, anybody can have access to my body. Um, and so when you're 14, it's a 70% correlation with at some point being sexually abused as a child. When 15, it drops to about 60%. So the younger a girl's having a baby, the more likely it is that bad things were going on in her house, in her neighborhood, at school, wherever, and she was not getting the help she needed. So, uh, you know, people could call in and tell us whether they think that's the reason that more Hispanic girls are having babies. 
But one of the good things, do you want me to go over that too? Yeah. Go, the good go news ahead, is that I'm I'm just shocked. It's, I'm, I'm it's listening really to you and I'm just troubling. shocked. And you know, there's programs where you we have sent nurses into homes of young teens when they have babies to try and make sure they're taking care of their baby well. It's called home visiting. And home visiting is really effective typically at stopping child abuse and neglect. And we kind of hoped it was going to drive down second teen pregnancy rates, like having a second baby before you're 20. It's not showing to be very effective. So whatever's causing the girls to feel like they are happier having a baby or feel like they're not worthy of controlling their body, there's those two dynamics. Yeah. Uh, probably the they feel like this is a project of life. This is a life project. I don't have any other project. I don't have future. I don't have, I don't like school. So let's have a baby. Exactly. Let's, let's have a family. And it seems so easy, but it's so hard. Uh, because actually what we found, I used to run a program with a lot of women in the city, with about 10,000 women. And what we found is when the girls who had babies when they're teenagers, when they were 23 and 24, they wanted so much to do what everybody else was doing, which was working. They wanted so much to work, but they had dropped out of high school. They hadn't gotten their GED, they couldn't go to college, they couldn't get a job, and they yeah, became life, more life. and more isolated. Life so, flips. Life flips. It seems so good at 16 to maybe have a baby because the baby loves you and you feel important and you feel mature. Yeah. And maybe you think you pleased some guy because a lot of girls told us that their boyfriends wanted them to have babies. Um, but... But yeah. they, they are not caring. But they, they are not caring for them, not at all, not at all. So, so chicas, realmente lo, lo que estaba contando Donna y yo estaba como callada mirándola impactada porque, porque no solo es eh, muy, um, digamos, lo interesante ver que la comunidad latina, nuestras chicas latinas son las que en este momento tienen la tasa más alta de embarazo en adolescentes. Y no nos explicamos por qué. Es más, si alguna mamá, alguna abuela latina nos quiere llamar y nos quiere contar la experiencia, lo puede hacer al 877-562-9428 y contarnos qué fue lo que pasó con su hija o con su nieta, por qué, por qué tuvieron bebés, qué, qué, qué fue lo que, cuál fue la disfuncionalidad. Y Dona nos está también mencionando algo bien importante y es que con eh, abuso sexual esto dispara también eh, las cifras de, de embarazo en las adolescentes. Entonces nos estamos preguntando qué está pasando. What is happening? With right, and, and maybe there's a young girl listening who is a teen parent and she would call. Yeah, and she will, you know. That would be great. No, We can't see you. Nobody will know who you are, but call us and talk to us. Tell us why you made that choice. Yeah, why? Why you... Why you did it? Because Why it's very it? hard and then life is going to be horrible. And the other thing, Donna, is you were telling us before the program started that fortunately there are a lot of places that can help uh, and can um, orient it. Right. Uh, girls and can um, be like a counselor. So yes. because probably I'm just having fun in a party, I, I'm not thinking, and then I don't use uh, preservatives, I don't use, well, that preservatives in, in English is another thing. No uso condom, eh, no, no uso ningún tipo para, eh, pa, para no quedar embarazada. Boom. Quedo embarazada. Yeah. So, so we're really lucky because we live in Philadelphia and there's or the city health department and Access Matters and Planned Parenthood and a number of organizations work with teens all over the city to help them think about what to do if they do get pregnant. Um, obviously, a girl can have an abortion in Pennsylvania. It's legal. It's protected under the Constitution right now. Yeah. Uh, so we could get an abortion. Or you could have a baby and you could give it for adoption. There's a lot of people who want children. Or you could raise it. I and mean, you have three choices. You're not stuck. Yeah. Um, but there's also those same organizations, and, and I think, Emma, you've posted them on Parati Mujer Facebook page, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, where you could get um, new forms of birth control. So I don't know how many girls listening know that, you know, if you're, if you're having sex and you are taking the pill, you have to take the pill every day. And I know, like, I'm supposed to take vitamins every day. Yeah. I might take vitamins once a month. 
right? It just it doesn't happen, right? I'm not good at regimen. Sometimes we are not disciplined. We are not disciplined. And I would imagine that when I was a teen, if I had to take a pill every day, it wouldn't happen. And if you miss one day with the pill, it doesn't work. Yeah. And condoms are kind of complicated, especially for kids. So now, Pennsylvania, um, if you're on public health insurance, um, or if you go to the city health centers, they will put in what's called long-acting birth control. And that is an IUD, and an IUD is just a little coil that gets inserted, and it makes it impossible for you to get pregnant, or 90% impossible for you to get pregnant. And you pregnant. don't have to think about it. And you don't have to think about it. It's permanent. Days, you just disconnect well, the, It's kind the, of two, the, the three years, right? It yeah. doesn't hurt. It's very safe for 70%, 80% of girls. They don't even know they have the IUD the entire time. Some girls have a little bit heavier cramps during their period, but it's pretty rare. It's better than, than changing better than life getting when pregnant. you don't want it. Yes. Yeah. And so you can get um, IUDs or what's called long-acting birth control now on public health insurance in Pennsylvania. And this is a good thing for those of you who are mothers and fathers and are listening. Um, Colorado was able to, when they put these birth control devices available for children, well, for any women, but really marketed them to teens, um, they found they drove their teen pregnancy rate nearly down to zero wow. because girls made the right decision and there then they were staying in school and they were graduating. Now, you know, that's the best prevention. But also if you, if you do have a daughter who's pregnant, you should know that the Philadelphia School District is working really hard to keep teen parents in school. And it has a program called ELECT and it has counseling for the girls it makes sure they get child care for free from the state so they can go to school. They manage the school roster so the girls, if they need to go to a doctor's appointment with their child or come in a little later early one day, elect is there to help girls stay in school. So we have a couple things going for us in Philly. Now this isn't only a Philly problem. I'm sure Parity Mujer has missed listeners all over the region. And by the way, the same Hispanic uh, pregnancy rate, Latina girls in every county are getting pregnant at much higher rates Tina, uh, than white or black girls that is, in those counties. If you're in Philly, there's resources, yeah. but even if you're outside of Philly, you can get the uh, long-acting birth control from your public health provider. So you can go in and get an IUD. If your health provider doesn't know about them, that have them call the state. But we want it to be zero because we want girls to have choices about when they have a baby and when they go to work and when they yeah, go to college. that's part of the choices that, that, yeah. that we want to do. Yeah. Amigas, eh, eh, adolescentes, chicas, jóvenes, millennials, si quieren llamar, llámenos. Cuéntenos por qué tomar una decisión y una vez cuando están embarazadas, que, cuáles son las opciones que ustedes piensan que tienen, porque quizás aquí podemos ayudarlas. Pueden llamar al 877 562-9428 lo que Dona nos está contando es es impactante, algo está pasando en nuestras familias eh, porque si las tasas van tan alto es porque eso nos está diciendo algo o hay unas familias disfuncionales o nuestras eh, adolescentes latinas no están teniendo la verdadera educación y el verdadero consejo acerca de su cuerpo y de la educación sexual o está habiendo mucho abuso sexual en nuestras familias, pero esta es una alarma. Y saben, yo no me puedo imaginar uno con 15, 16 años y de pronto queda embarazada y, y no sabe qué hacer. Que, cómo, ahora, ¿cómo voy a alimentar a mi hijo? ¿Cómo voy a armar una familia que no sea disfuncional? ¿Cómo me va a afectar esto en mi desarrollo, en mi progreso? Porque ser mamá es algo muy lindo, pero ser mamá es lindo si yo puedo darle a mi hijo todas las condiciones físicas, económicas y psicológicas que puedo darle. Si nosotras no damos esa base, vamos a seguir creando sociedades que son disfuncionales y que se rompen fácilmente las familias. Quiero informarles que si ustedes van a Para Ti Mujer con Emma Restrepo en el Facebook, van a encontrar toda la información de la cual Dona nos está eh, mencionando, toda la ayuda que hay en Filadelfia, eh, van a encontrar todas las páginas web, así que vayan y le queremos agradecer en este momento Rodrigo Duque nos escucha desde Colombia y Chapis González nos escucha, yo pienso que desde Filadelfia, <risa> también Cristina Sornosa desde Colombia y tenemos una oyente desde Canadá que se llama Mónica Rincón. Además sabemos que Darío y Miguelina están conectados y muy pronto van a saber por qué. Eh, Donna, you told me that there are um, 
already icons in the community uh, organization that are helping with this matter specifically, like Congreso, Esperanza Health Center, and Maria de los Santos. Absolutely. And, and the girls can go to any one of those centers, Congreso, Esperanza, Maria de los Santos, or a city health clinic that's close to them. Uh, because depending on what neighborhood, you may not live on Eastern North Philly, right? So, um, and, and you can go in and you can say, look, I'm a teen parent. What are my choices? Number one, I don't want to have another baby. Can you help me? And the doctor might say, oh, I'll put you on the pill. But you might want to say, what else is there? Because this is brand new. Mm -hmm. So you're listening to this show this morning. You probably know more as a result of listening to this show this morning than the doctor or nurse you're going to go see at any one of the clinics because it's brand new that girls can get um, through their health insurance long-acting birth control. And what you want to say is, I want long-acting birth control. Long-acting birth control. Donna, um, the classical question. If I don't have health insurance, Mm -hmm. uh, is there any help if I don't have papers? Um, well, Maria de la Santos definitely treats anybody. So people could go there um, and the city health clinics. So you come into the city health clinic um, and they're all over the city. They're called district health centers. And they don't ask for any documents, any insurance. And Maria de los Santos also um, and there's also Puentes de Salud. Puentes de Salud so, in South Philly. Yeah, so those places could help you without any insurance or without any papers. With no questions. No questions. Uh, bueno, eh, chicas, están escuchando, mamás, abuelas, a veces son las abuelas las que tienen que lidiar con este problema en nuestra comunidad. Eh, Congreso es el 267-765-2272. Esperanza Health Center es el 215-831-1100. María de los Santos es 215-291-2500. Y repito este número porque es donde pueden además atenderlas si no tienen documentos, si no tienen seguro de salud en el 215-291-2500. Y también Dona nos está hablando de algo interesante y es que las chicas latinas, las adolescentes latinas, son las que eh, además tienen un segundo bebé. Eh, a diferencia de nuestras hermanas afroamericanas y nuestras hermanas americanas, eh, ellas tienen un segundo bebé, así que la cosa no está fácil. Eh, hay también servicios en escuelas de Planning Parenthood en Northeast, Central, Ben Franklin and Edison, son las escuelas donde eh, también pueden tener ayuda. Eh, Donna, ¿qué... What is, what is exactly, sometimes mothers, uh, grandmothers, they don't understand the consequences of having a baby uh, when you are a teenager. Um, I'm also I'm thinking that probably a teenager, even though she, want, she wants to be a very good mother, probably it's hard to be a good mother because you are 15 or 16 years old. So what are the consequences and the consequences for a city um, for developing for everything? Well, what, the, what we see is that, you know, the pathway to poverty is accelerated by teen pregnancy, right? So when you're trying to raise a kid alone, uh, you not only have to feed yourself, but you have to feed a baby and you've got to clothe a baby and you've got to take care of a baby and it's not cheap. And so, you know, originally you're going to think, oh, my mother, my grandmother, my aunt, everybody's going to help. But um, often that's a big burden on people, and people get tired of that. I have two friends who are Latinas, mm -hmm. and their daughters had babies. And uh, it really put a big stress on the household, on the family, because there's a new baby, and the girl still wants to be a teenager. And so the baby's Go at home with parties. the grandmother, and it's... A lot of tension, and in both cases, those girls have been forced to move. Their mother's like, look, you got to move and take care of your own baby. Uh, because yeah. I work, I raised you guys, I'm now already done. I'm done. Um, so obviously there's some people who are nicer than that or something yeah. like that. But it's so, it limits your life. You, If you want to be a kid and you want to go see your friends, you have a baby to take care of that you're taking with you. Your friends might be out of clubs, you're home with your baby. Um, the other thing is that it's very hard to go to school because babies get sick, um, babies need attention, babies have doctor's appointment, it's really hard to stay in school. So the highest dropout rate among girls, reason for dropout among girls is pregnancy. So without a high school diploma, 
you cannot get a job anymore. Yeah. Right? I mean, you could probably move to Erie and pick grapes. Uh, you could get a farming job. And the closest farming jobs are probably, they're not in Philly, put it that way. <laughs> right? Um, so, <laughs> increasingly. Increasing. No, people are basically looking as a high school diploma as an exi- as a not that you learned so much, but you were you were like stable enough to get through. And if you didn't get a high school diploma, people think mm, that that kid's got issues. And you do. You have a baby. So now you're out of the workforce in those early years, your entry level job, and then you're looking to get an entry level job when your baby starts school. So now maybe you're. 23, 24, and you're looking for an entry-level job, and you're flipping burgers, or you're working in the neighborhood store, and you're thinking, what am I doing this yeah, for? Like, like I'm 24, no future. No future. Yeah. And so that's why teen pregnancy is kind of a pathway to poverty. It's because you get so discouraged that you end up on public assistance because why am I at 24 working at the corner grocery? Yeah, it is a shame. Chapis nos está diciendo aquí en Facebook que gracias por hablar de esto y contrarrestar el silencio de esta realidad mm-hmm. que crea barreras tremendas para nuestras hijas. Gracias, Chapis, por estar en sintonía. También Jennifer eh, eh, Rodríguez, la CEO de la Cámara de Comercio, nos está diciendo que eh, una gran audiencia y un gran eh, programa y un gran tema que tenemos aquí. Eh, dona, para nuestras mamás eh, y a abuelas latinas y también para nuestras adolescentes. Dona nos está mostrando cómo hay un camino, hay un link, hay una unión entre embarazo adolescente y pobreza, porque las eh, posibilidades de pobreza, de progreso se reducen de una manera extrema y probablemente la única posibilidad de una mamá adolescente es trabajar en la droguería de enfrente o eh, quizás en el restaurante pequeño de al lado y no hay más futuro. Es muy difícil eh, ir al college, es muy difícil terminar la escuela, aunque haya ayudas en las escuelas. Así que, chicas latinas, um, hay que discutir este tema, hay que abrirlo. Tenemos que saber por qué está pasando esto para poder realmente eh, eh, trancarlo. Una de las cosas que hablábamos con Don antes de comenzar el, el programa es que muchas veces nuestras chicas, eh, nuestras adolescentes se sienten que que sí, que no hay futuro, que no hay un proyecto de vida y que quizás eh, el mejor proyecto y, y poder armar algo, tener alguien que me quiera, es tener un, un bebé, eh, porque el bebé me va a querer, me va a buscar a mí, eh, pero eso realmente lo que está mostrando es que hay un vacío de afecto en nuestras niñas. Así que tenemos que, que investigar por qué está pasando esto. We, we really need to know what is happening, Donna. And we can stop it if, yes. if we Now, know the reason. And I would imagine that there may be a mother or a grandmother or a teen parent who's listening who is in school. It's not that every girl who has a baby drops out. But when we talk to the girls with babies in high school, which we have talked a lot with them, they're exhausted. It's a lot of work to have What? a baby and go to school. Juggling child care, juggling doctor's appointments, trying to keep up with their classwork. It is exhausting. When my baby is sick... It's a lot of work, and and the girls kind of feel alone. So I will say the other thing that happens, Emma, is that girls don't raise their hand and tell anybody they're pregnant. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. So yeah. all of a sudden, the school counselor notices you're no longer coming to school. They don't know that you dropped out because you're pregnant. So, you know, girls might stay in school until they're seven or eight months and starting to show, wow. or even eight months till their delivery. Yeah. And it's sort of like... They're not asking for help because they feel like, I got to do this alone. And you don't have to do it alone. You got I'm pregnant. strong enough. Yeah, I'm strong. And there's nobody that can help me. And you kind of get into a very protective I don't want anybody to interfere in my life. Right. And um, I feel like if I ask for help, it'll be a sign of weakness. But if you are in pregnant and you are in school, go see your school nurse. Go see your school counselor and begin to talk to them about how the school can help you come right back to school after you deliver your baby. Not the next day, obviously, but come back to school yeah. and they can help you so, so you there stay are ways in school. To, to, Absolutely. To re embrace the life. And we must do it. These are the girls that are at greatest risk of never being able to live on their own. Yeah. También nos está escuchando Juan Valencia y mamás, eh, abuelas. Chicas, si ya está el bebé en camino, busquen ayuda. 
No vayan en esto solas, porque la ciudad está prohibiendo muchos servicios en la comunidad latina, aún si no hay papeles, aún si no hay documentos, hay formas de ayudarlas. Las escuelas también están ayudando para que si ya se hizo, ya vamos para adelante y miremos la manera de, de, de progresar. Bueno, eh, nos vamos a un corte, no se muevan chicas, estamos con Donna Cooper hablando de eh, embarazo adolescente, ya volvemos con ustedes.